Hey, this is Toby. Welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we continue to code our pattern recognition trading bot for the MetaTrader 5 platform. Now, before we start coding, just a quick info. If you want to learn MQL5 from the ground up or even more advanced stuff, check out my alpha and beta programming course on my website. Um, yeah, the link is below the video. Okay, so let's switch to Visual Studio Code. This is where we left off in the last video. If you have, if you have not seen the first part, I will link it up here. You can go watch it and then come back to this video. Um, I will use Visual Studio Code to edit or to code this um, MQL5 program. You can also use the default meta editor. If you want to know how to set up Visual Studio Code for MQL5, I also made a video about this. I will link it up here. Um, yeah, it's a basic tutorial how to set it up. So last time we already started here with the load pattern function um, to load the pattern from our CSV file into our array. And before we continue to code, I want to change the location of the file. So we can open the platform here, go to file, open data folder. We already created the CSV file in the last video and it's here in the MQL5 folder and here in files. You can see the pattern.csv file here and I will just cut it here. I want to move it to another location. So we can also access this file when we run it, the EA in the strategy tester. So I will go to the terminal folder here and open the common folder here, files, and I will paste it in this folder, pattern.csv. And if I open this file, yeah, also I might have a different pattern here uh, because I did some testing, um, but it doesn't really matter for the video. Just have a few bars here with the format, date, time, open, high, low, close, tick, volume, volume, and spread. And I showed you how to create this file in the last video from any um, symbol from the MetaTrader 5 platform. Okay, uh, let's minimize this window and let's go to Visual Studio Code. And here we have to change a few things now to open the file. Uh, we have to specify the common flag. So after our file CSV flag here, we write another pipe and write file underscore common. So this just indicates that the file is located in a common folder um, in the MetaTrader 5 um, yeah, data folder. So we still check for the handle, if it's an invalid handle, and let's read the CSV file into our array. Okay, so I want to create a few variables here. So first one is of type integer called line. We initialize this with zero and another one also integer called maybe column, also set to zero. And now to read the file, we use a while loop. And in here we check with the function is file ending or oh, file is ending. Yeah, file is ending. And here our handle of the file like this. And if the file is not ending, we want to loop through that uh, while loop. Open the body here. And the first step here is to read the current line of the CSV file. So we create a variable of type string and let's just call it string. And we use the file read function, file read string. And here we also use our handle this. Okay, next we want to create a simple if statement here and we want to check the line. If the line is greater than zero um, to avoid basically the header line of the CSV file um, and our column variable here is equal to six. Um, if we take a look at the file Column number six, so one, two, three, four, five, six. These are the closed prices um, of our bars. So if that's the case, we go in here and first of all, we get the size of the pattern array. So equals array size and here our global pattern array because we want to increase that size and we want to 
yeah, write the close price to our array. So now we can use array resize here and we use, of course, our pattern array and size plus one to increase the array. It's a dynamic array, so we have to resize it um, to add a new element. And yeah, and now let's actually save the close price to our array. So size is now the index and we get with string to double or string variable here. And um, the string is actually not the entire line of the CSV file. It's just the next um, value until the delimiter. And our delimiter here is set with a tab. So we get each value basically with that while loop, with that file read string. We read e each value here uh, until the next delimiter, until the next tab. And this way we are able to save this string here into our pattern size array uh, because this is now the close price because we check here with this if statement that it's column number six and the line is greater than zero to avoid the header line. Maybe we also write a comment here. Um, filter for, or filter to avoid header line and only read close rises. Okay. Uh, let's um, hit compile. Make sure that we don't have any mistakes in our file. Okay, next we have to increase our two variables here, our counters. Um, so we do another if statement here. If and our file is line ending. Again, our handle here. So if we are at the end of a line, we want to increase our line variable here. So plus plus by one. And we want to reset our column variable to zero, like this. And after that if statement, we increase the column variable by one, because here with each loop, we read one value until the next tab uh, delimiter, like this. And after the while loop here, we can now close the file, so file close and again our handle like this. Okay, let's compile again. Make sure you don't have any mistakes. Okay, now to test this, I want to print out the array or pattern array. So we can use the uh, predefined function array print here and our pattern array like this. And I also want to get the number of bars into a variable. Of course, we can also use the array size uh, with the pattern array, but maybe it's better to have a separate variable for this. So let's just write a comment here, set pattern properties and here a variable pattern bars. And we get the bars, of course, with array size and our pattern array. So these are just the number of bars in our pattern. And I will declare this now as a global variable here up in our global variable section after the pattern array um, of type integer. Um, we called it pattern bars like this. Um, okay, maybe we also set this to zero here. Let's go down again. Let's hit compile. Okay, no mistakes. Now we should be able to see the results when we run this EA in the MetaTrader 5 platform. Before this, I will also compile using the script here in Visual Studio Code. So the EA is reloaded into the MetaTrader 5 platform. And okay, let's go to MetaTrader 5. Here I just have a normal Euro dollar chart and I will just drag and drop the EA 
on this chart. And we have no inputs, so click OK. And we can see the print statement here, the array um, print function with all the close prices. So let's check if this is actually correct. So the first close price here, 0, 8, 4 is this one here, 0, 8, 4, and the next one, 4, 17, yeah, and so on. Yeah, I also want to see the last one. So I will just um, open the viewer. Here it's 398. So this should be this value here, 398. Okay, so now we have all the close prices here in our pattern array in our EA. So I will remove the EA again. Um, I also want to print out the, oh no, that should be fine. The pattern bars should be fine. It's just the size of the array. Okay, so that's it for our load pattern function for now. Now we can continue with the next step. Okay, let's have a look at the onInit function here, where we called the load pattern uh, custom function. Uh, before that, we also want to check the inputs of the EA. I'll just write a comment here, check user inputs, and we do this with a if statement. The function will be called check inputs. We don't do this right now, but we will have to do this at some point in the series. Um, so if this is false, we also return here in it parameters incorrect. Um, then we also want to set the magic number to our trade object. We don't have a trade object, so let's create this here in the global variable section. Uh, maybe we do this before our pattern array, so we can just write C trade and the object will be called trade this. And now we can write here, after we call the check input function, set magic number to trade object. And here just trade dot set expert magic number and our input magic number like this. Okay, then we load uh, the pattern and after that we want also want to draw the pattern but that's the next step so let's hit compile here make sure we don't have any mistakes okay we have one check inputs of course yeah let's write the empty shell for this check inputs function here after our or actually before our load pattern function in our custom functions uh, section so here again check user inputs and this will be also of type boolean. Check inputs, no parameters. And we return true in the end. Yeah, that's the empty shell um, for now. We will do this later. So let's hit compile again. Um, something, yeah, we need some brackets here just empty round brackets because we don't have any parameters. So let's hit compile again. Now we don't have any mistakes. Okay, next I want to draw the pattern on the chart. So when we run the EA, we actually see the pattern and we do this after the load pattern function call here in our own init function. So let's write a comment here, draw pattern. And yeah, this will be a void custom function named draw pattern maybe no parameters like this. Um, let's write this function. So we go in our custom function section after our load pattern function here, we just write draw pattern and void draw pattern, no parameters, open the body. Okay, now we should be able to compile again without any mistakes. And now we draw the pattern here on the chart. But I think we will do this in the next part. So again, remember, if you want to learn MQL5, check out my website for the alpha and beta programming course. And yeah, I wish you good trades. 
Have a great week and I'll see you in the next part. Bye-bye.